Okay, so what I want to do is bevel this in order to create... I want to create a simple high-poly version of this model uh, in order to bake out an ambient occlusion map. Now, this is a pretty simple process. Um, basically, all I need is this model to be able to smooth. So when we go into um, Mesh Smooth, and if I hit 3 on the keyboard, so I haven't smoothed it, uh, if I hit th 3, oops, that was 4, if I hit 3 on the keyboard, that gives us a preview of how the smooth will look when we apply the smooth. So it's not actually smooth when you hit 3, it's only a preview, and we can see it's uh, destroying the model. So we need to just insert control loops or bevels in order to allow that to smooth nicely. Now, I could just manually, if I were to just to demonstrate with the multi-cut tool by holding down control, I can insert an edge loops at the top without any problem and it runs all the way through. And the reason it, when I hold down control and it runs all the way through the model is because it's quads. But I'm going to have a problem with that when I try to do these faces because these join here. So for this model, and just to be clear, this is not our in-game version. We finished our in-game version, that's done. So what I'll actually do is save this and call it um, HP for high poly. So it's a completely different model. All right, so because that bevel's not working through here, I'm just going to adjust these edge loops. And so what I want is these loops If I just do a quick bevel on those loops and then just quickly go to vert mode with target weld and clean these guys up. You can see what happens, that just runs that all the way through. So now if I were to target weld down here that gives me a nice loop all the way through. I just need to repeat that for each section where I've got them coming to a single point. And just repeat that for the whole model. See how it's orbiting? And I can't orbit any time you do that. Just select your verts and hit F to focus. So get in the habit of being able to zoom in quickly on exactly what you need. Cool. So now if I select the whole model and apply a bevel, Just turn on my shaded wires so we can see that bevel. You see what it's doing there. Might actually give it two segments. And now when I hit select the model and hit three to smooth preview. That's the smoothed model. Get rid of its history, delete history. And so just be aware that when I hit three, that gives me a smooth preview, but it's just a preview of what it will look like smooth. It's not the actual model being smoothed. So I'll just hit one to go back to that. And to smooth the model for real, I just need to go into mesh smooth and I'll just take a look at the options and I'll do two subdivisions and hit apply. I can change the subdivision level if I want, but basically that's actually subdivided the model. So that's real geometry that we're looking at. Um, it's not a smooth preview. I just want to select that model and export selection. And I'll call this uh, HP for high poly. Okay, so the reason I've exported those two OBJs is that I'm using this program, XNormal. Very common program for rendering uh, meshes. Uh, and I'm going to use this to generate a map. I'm going to transfer from the high poly to the low poly. And I'll just um, 
got some old meshes in there, so just click on clear all if you have anything previously loaded from an earlier project or a different project. And all I do is in the high poly, I right click and add mesh, and I navigate to my project to where I've saved the high poly. So it's looking for the high definition model, just to remind you, I want the HP one. And here, right click, add mesh, and I'm looking for my low poly. At this point, I could manually add a cage, but for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just using the standard uh, ray distance. And I'll just leave that to 0.5. Baking options. Um, to start with, I'll turn off normal map and just create an ambient occlusion. That's mainly what I'm concerned with. And we have to tell it where we want to save it. So images, textures. Um, might go BMP is fine, and I'll actually override this one. So Beams AO. You can see if I click the options, that's what we're trying to make is a uh, ambient occlusion. So that soft shadowing around the model, which is really useful inside of the game engine. You just click generate maps. And so that's, uh, this renders a lot quicker uh, than it will in Maya. And I typically avoid rendering uh, baking maps in Maya unless it's for something very simple like... Uh... Okay, so that's rendered uh, a fairly nice ambient occlusion. Um, these are all the side sections and uh, that's pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. So that's great. So this is the UV snapshot that I exported out of the UV editor inside of Maya. I'll just take a look, um, just to point out an older approach. So if you're working um, previous generation of games, uh, modern generation of games use PVR workflow. Uh, previous generations uh, don't, where PVR is using realistic shading. So here I'm just selecting the ambient occlusion that I baked out of X normal, um, purely to demonstrate a point. If I paste this in. A very standard workflow in the past would be to use this um, this ambient occlusion and it, it looks pretty good. It'll, it'll create some shadowing. Um, let's just take a look actually. So we can see the steel beam type effects and what we're also seeing is the ambient occlusion shading in that model so it's got a little bit of shadowing happening on that in the inside there and you can see that's a lot darker than this for example um, which is a very nice effect it, it works pretty well and it's a, a pretty standard approach for making assets in games um, but with unity 5 um, pbr workflow so physics based rendering or physically um, based shading pbs um, which is fairly standard in current gen games sort of PS4, uh, Xbox One type stuff, um, you're not doing that anymore. You're, you're putting that into a separate slot and you're letting the lighting dictate in-game how much shading should be applied. So just pointing out the difference. Here are the wireframes, the UV snapshot exported out of Maya. And I'm going to create a normal map. Uh, I'll just close this. I'll come back to this in a moment. So in Quixel, I'm opening up Endu and new project creator, make sure it's the size I want, so 2048 squared. So import your mesh. So just the Beams LP model that we used in X normal in order to create our ambient occlusion. This is looking for a baked normal. Um, I could use the normal map that I generated uh, if I generated one using X normal, but in this case, we're just going to create it from scratch because we want a pretty simple normal map on this. So I'm not importing that, just the mesh. Um, make sure you save it where you want it. Kind of goes without saying. And create a new project. And the first thing we need to do, it's just a, at the moment, just a template. These with file structures that it gives you is Quixel. That's, if you see this, you know you're working in a Quixel project. I'm just going to go new sculpt layer. 
And that's the very first thing you need to remember to do. Uh, and this gives me a live sculpt layer. So it's basically a layer that I can draw on. And uh, to give you an idea of what this will do, let's just make this brush a bit smaller and um, just draw something. It's drawing a normal map directly on my object. So I'll just undo that. What I want to do here is look at my UVs. So I'll just go file open and grab the UV snapshot that we got out of Maya. I'll drag select the whole lot and control C to copy. And in my Quixel, right at the top here, I'll, I'll just make a new layer and bring that above everything. And then control V to paste. I'll actually just rename that. So I know that's my UV and that's purely for my reference. So I know where I'm drawing. So back to this sculpt layer. Now what I want to do is draw some um, rivet bolt type effects on my model. And that's, that's basically the only effect that I'm after. Now in order to do that, of course, I need to identify which uh, faces I'm working with. So just quickly, I'll jump to Maya and take a look. So I'm selecting the bottom section, the bottom vertices so that when I take a look in my UV snapshot or the UV editor, we can see what we're looking at. So it's these planes here. Specifically, uh, that's not going to help. What I really want to do is look at these faces. So if I select those two, I can see it's this line straight through here. And uh, select those two, and we can see we're looking at these two. So it's really just these four in, in the middle here is where I want to draw. Uh, and basically what I want to do here is just create some rivets, some little circles, and give it the impression of some sort of reinforced steel structure. Um, just to sh essentially for this project to demonstrate how you can go using Quixel to generate um, normals fairly quickly. So back in Photoshop, uh, it's these faces here. And once again, I'm on my draw layer. So what I want to do is use any of my Photoshop tools to draw in this shape. And I'll actually, I might just set my brush to white, um, but that shouldn't really matter. What I'm going to do is use the ellipse tool and just hold down shift as I draw that to make it a perfect circle. And I'll probably go about that size. And so that's filled it for me. If I hover my cursor over here, this changes. And what this means is it's turning the shape into a normal. So I'll click that button. It's giving me a weird little error. It might come up a couple of times, but this should still work. Great, so that's given me this ellipse has turned into a normal and it's live. So I can change these settings and I like, like the idea of getting it a little bit flat on the side there. And I might just uh, try to soften it, that flat section. Um, maybe if I turn up my softness a little, maybe not too much. Just get a little bit of a divot happening. Um, and what I'll do now, I'll just take a look at this in 3D. So I just have to click the 3D button. And that brings up our 3D viewer. Okay, so here in 3D, I can just hold down Alt and my left mouse to orbit around, the same as Maya. Uh, and I can see the effect that that's given me. So it's obviously, it's an illusion. It's just a, a normal map. So we're not going to see any geometry. If you were to look at it at this angle, it wouldn't look so great. But for the sort of effect we're after, that works really well. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Um, I'll just close down 3D. Once you've opened it, that just pops back up. All you need to do is click the button. So what I want to do is use this layer. So it's a folder with a, a bunch of effects in order to be live. So at the moment it's live, but I'm happy with that. I want to sort of 
uh, lock that in. So I'll press the um, zip mode. Now this is non-destructive. I can turn that on and come back in and edit that at any time. But what that lets me do is move on, uh, make changes, and if I need to, I can come back and change that. Um, so I can do other things and then come back to this ellipse layer if I wanted to. Uh, okay, so all I'm doing here is duplicating this. Duplicate group. And let's see, I'll move it a precise amount. So you can see as I hold down shift and drag that, it's snapping just into the horizontal or the vertical. And I'll move it, uh, let's say exactly 50 pixels. And what I'll do now is uh, select them both, duplicate layers, hold down one and hold down shift and move that from here. So it's currently 50, which means if I move it another 50, it's going to be 100. So I've moved that exactly 100. Um, however, something looks a bit odd. Uh, it just doesn't have the same effect as that. So I'll actually just delete those layers. They haven't worked. What I'll do is just commit to to this because I don't actually want to change this normal. If I wanted to, I could um, just unzip it and keep working on it. But instead, what I'll actually do is merge group and that just makes a single layer. And I'll do the same here, merge group. And now I'll hit uh, control E, which is the same as going merge down. So control E to merge that into the one layer. And now that's, that's committed, that's, uh, that is destructible. I can't come back and make changes to my normals. But what that lets me do is uh, if I click on the, the layer, duplicate layer, hold down shift and move it 100 pixels. Control E, so I'm merging those again. Duplicate layer. Hold down shift. So I know that that should be 150 plus another 50. So that goes up to 200. And probably let's control E. So they're all there. Duplicate layer. So it's going to be 350 plus 50 makes it an extra, an, an extra 50. That's 400 pixels. And I might just duplicate that layer. And uh, let's see, get that right on 350. I could just move that an extra to 400. And I'll just merge all of those down. And now with hitting M to get my marquee select, just drag select those ones I don't want and hit delete. And now that's one layer here. Should get in the habit of naming things. Rivets. All right. I'll duplicate that layer, hold down, I'll click left click, hold down shift and drag that up. And collapse those. Now we'll duplicate again. Duplicates layer. And one more time. Uh, here I'm just holding down space. So if you hold down space and left click, you can move your canvas. Uh, and I'm hitting control plus, control minus to zoom in and out. Just basic Photoshop functionality. So you try to align those guys. Let's take a look, turn off my UVs. So I'm not seeing the UVs weirdly displayed in my 3D. And open up 3D. Now you can see it hasn't updated. 
You just need to click this refresh, so it forces a refresh. Anytime you're unsure if you're seeing the right thing or not, just force that refresh. So we're seeing rivets on both sides. And it's a pretty good effect. That's that's essentially what I was after. Um, but if you look at photo reference of rivets, the reason beams get riveted is that there's a steel plate uh, being connected by bolts. So you, you will usually see a little section sticking out. Uh, it could simply be there. But what I'll do, I'd just like to have a go at creating that and see how it looks. So I'll just uh, select down here. I'll just make a new sculpt layer. So we're on a whole new layer, and this is above that original rivets. And what I'll do uh, let's see, I want to come right up to this UV, but not right up to the end. So just before. Probably something like that. And convert that selection to a normal. Now the rivets are still there, they're just underneath. I can just, you can see them here. We just move that up above. So the rivets are still there. So I'll come back to my sculpt layer. So this is live. And we'll just make that a bit smaller. A fair bit smaller, I think. That's actually about what I'm after. Um, I might just duplicate that group. And hold down shift to drag that right up to there. Turn off my UVs and take a look in 3D. Just refresh that. And um, that's pretty much the effect that I was after. It definitely gives it uh, a nice level of, of detail. It's more realistic than it was before. Um, yeah, that's cool. All right, I'm happy with that. So I'll just duplicate that over to the others. And these sculpt layers, what I'll do is merge layers into a single group. I'll just turn the UVs back on for the reference. Uh, okay, now duplicate layer. So these need obviously need to be underneath my rivets. And I'll just uh, very quickly, just I'll speed this up, just zip through and place those in. And just one last check to make sure that's worked. So we can see in 3D, I've got the normal map effect I want. If I wanted to, I could go through and, and do the rest, but um, I'm happy just to do it with these vertical sections. Um, we're not seeing the light over here. If I hold down shift and right mouse, I can move my light. So now I'm seeing the other side of the model. And that's all worked as expected. Now at this point, I want to save this out. Just uh, that's my normal map. That's that's all I'm after. Um, actually, one more thing I think would be nice to do is a little bit of scratched metal onto this map. And what I want to do is I've got this texture. I actually want to create a basic normal map from this texture. So I'm going into my Photo normal presets, and I want. Um, I'll just try standard metal, active dock to make it transform. And so that's simply taking a photo and converting it to a normal map based on the preset settings. You can see it's pretty minor, but it just gives it a little bit of metallic. It'll give it some bumpiness in our uh, in-game render. Uh, 
I'll just uh, flatten this image. And then copy, oops, copy that layer and paste it onto my normal. And we'll just set that to overlay. So I can still see uh, obviously the rivets and we can see a bit of an effect. What I might actually do though is just come through with an eraser. So I've just pressed E for eraser. I'll turn the opacity down. And this is on that top layer here. I might just come through and get rid of a little bit of detail there. I don't need uh, endo anymore. Probably a bit too much opacity. I just want these beams to stand out a little bit, to look a little bit different from the rest of it. So I want to keep some sort of normal map scratching and detail on it. Just think it'll look better with uh, a little bit of difference to the base material. And the last one. Okay, I'm ready to use this as a normal map. I'll save this out. This is my finished normal map. Um, so I'll set it to PNG for Unity. But I'm putting this into this finished location. Uh, we'll just call it Beams NRM, which is a PNG. Okay, so in my project folder, in Windows, I've got a folder called export, and in here I've just got the th key things I want. So the ambient occlusion that I created out of um, X, X normal. Now that's actually BMP, so you can see there when I hover over, that's 16 meg, whereas my PNG is only 4 meg. So let's just fix that. I'll open that up in Photoshop and save as a PNG. And use the same convention, so the name of the, the object and then some sort of initials at the end to identify what it is. So it's an AO, ambient occlusion. PNG, save. Now, I've, this is just a backup, so I've already got this BMP file elsewhere. I've moved all of these resources into a separate folder, so I'll get rid of that. So back in my images, in my textures in the project, I've got what I need. Um, so here we've got an ambient occlusion. You can see if I hover over, it's only 236K. It's the same size, very high quality, but it's much smaller. Um, likewise with this texture, this is a BMP. I'll just prep this for Unity a bit better by making that a PNG. Um, and I'll call this beams. ALB for albedo, which is basically just a color map. It is just a color map uh, without any shadow information. So in Unity, I've got a new project. And what I want, I'll get rid of that damaged metal, is my low poly model, my normal map, my ambient occlusion, and my albedo. I'll drag select all four and drag those into the project folder. And then Unity will import all of those. So there's the model. I'll just put that into the scene. All right, I've got a blank scene here. I'll just um, create directional light so I can see what I'm looking at at the object. I'll just go to my lighting tab and in my scene the skybox isn't added so we'll just put that in. Uh, so to do that you just go into window lighting 
brings up this tab and in your scene is that's where the skybox is. Uh, and the sun, I'll just use this directional light for the sun. And it'd be nice to have a floor. So we can see on the size of that floor, this beam is gigantic. I might just scale that down. Uh, it's definitely important to check your object um, in 3D before you bring it in. So just make sure you're quick. That's the lighting tab I want the inspector. Um, you can play with the scale using the scale factor if you need to adjust your model. Um, anyway, so I've got the beams. I'm just going to create a material. Beams MAT for material. And I'll apply that to the model. Now we'll watch the textures as we load them up. So to start with the norm normal map, put that into the normal map channel. And it says it's not marked as a normal, normal map. We'll just fix that now. So that updates and you can see the result. We're getting these steel beam type effects and we're getting a lot of um, sort of damage on the metal, sort of metal type effect. Potentially might be a bit strong, but um, it works. We'll wait until we assemble the other shaders, the other colors before we see how this looks. So let's um, add the albedo. So this is the color, goes into albedo. It gives it much more variety, a much more interesting look. And keep in mind the normal map detail that we created is actually base, was created from this uh, color photo. So that's actually this photo that we used to make the normal map. That's what we're using as our albedo. And what that means is the color information from that albedo matches the normal map, which helps it look more realistic. And the AO ambient occlusion just comes into our occlusion. When we apply that, we see just a bit of shading appear. So it's just giving it, um, if I turn that off, it's not super obvious, but it's actually giving it a little bit more shading near the edges and less shading through the flat sections. So you probably won't see the effect very well at the top here where there's no sort of edges to create shadowing. So as I turn that down, you can see it's not really doing anything, but what it is doing is creating a bit of shading down here, which is nice. Uh, and that's basically our finished asset right there. So that's you know, work workflow there for creating steel beams using Endu for creating a normal map. Uh, and we went over the process of creating ambient occlusion by rendering in X normal to make, uh, to turn a high poly into a low poly. Um, that's that's the first step in using the, the workflow in the pipeline for creating high detail maps. Uh, probably the next step would be adding more detail to your high poly in Maya so that when you bake your ambient occlusion in X normal, you can also bake a normal map. So for example, these beams, instead of drawing them in um, Endu, which was very quick and easy, what you could do is actually model this, these shapes in Maya, which again would be pretty quick and simple. Um, then with all that extra detail, that high poly detail, you could bring that into X normal and bake your ambient occlusion, uh, sorry, bake your normal map um, in X normal, which is a very useful workflow. So I hope that was educational and uh, you've taken your first steps into learning the production pipeline for sort of high-end 3D assets. Cheers.